Good morning, this Friday morning, the first day of our slightly uh, less restrictive lockdown. I trust that uh, you're going to enjoy the greater freedom that we have. I enjoyed a walk this morning and uh, I'm looking forward to be able to exercise more regularly as well as to go to the hardware shop a little bit later today. But today we're looking at the uh, theme of the power of Christ from the perspective of the Heidelberg Catechism. And I've chosen here the first question of the Catechism, which surely must be one of the most encouraging and beautiful statements from our confessions, assuring us of the love of Christ and the power of Christ to work in us, uh, assuring us of our salvation. So let me read the, uh, the uh, question and answer for you, and then we'll look at six ways in which the power of Christ is uh, demonstrated to us um, and uh, as, as the Catechism gives it to us here. So let's read the question. What is your only comfort in life and in death? The answer that I, with body and soul, both in life and death, am not my own, but belong unto my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who with his precious blood has fully satisfied for all my sins and delivered me from all the power of the devil and so preserves me that without the will of my heavenly Father not a hair can fall from my head. Yea, that all things must be subservient to my salvation. Wherefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me heartily willing and ready henceforth to live unto him. Now I'm sure you'll agree that is a, a magnificent, beautiful, encouraging statement of how we can depend on Christ and what he assures us of by his power. But let's look at the six things pointed out in the Catechism. Firstly, Jesus has, by his precious blood, fully satisfied for all my sins. That is a remarkable thing, that in his death on the cross, he sufficiently uh, atoned for all my sins, past, present and future, so that not one of my sins ever needs to come between me and my Heavenly Father. Jesus has fully satisfied for all my sins. And you might like to think about some sins perhaps which weigh on your mind and your conscience. Bring those before Christ and be assured that as you repent of those, He forgives you and His blood is fully satisfied for all your sins. Secondly, He has delivered me from the power of of the devil. I think it is a neglected truth these days that much of our struggle against sin and much of our struggle in this world is uh, there because we have a struggle against Satan. Satan is a reality in this world and Peter tells us that he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if we do not reckon with this reality, we are sure to fail in our desire to live for the Lord. And yet the Catechism reminds us that Jesus has delivered me from all the power of the devil. As Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 2, he made a public spectacle of the, the evil spirits through his death on the cross. Thirdly, he preserves me so that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head. And of course, this is a reference to Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus assures his disciples that not a hair can fall from their head. Nothing can harm them apart from the will of their heavenly Father. It speaks about his uh, physical preservation. And as we face up to the reality of the coronavirus, as um, we move out of the stage 5 lockdown, level 5 lockdown, we realize that there probably will be an increase in the number of coronavirus infections in our society. It could touch us. And yet here we are assured 
that not a hair can fall from our head apart from the will of the Father because the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior is preserving us. And um, we can say too with assurance that the coronavirus cannot touch us without the permission of our Heavenly Father, without the Lord Jesus Christ allowing it. And if it does touch us, well, it cannot do us harm any, uh, in any way beyond what God allows. And so there is another encouragement for us. Fourthly, we are assured that all things must be subservient to our salvation. It is a reference to Romans 8 verses 28 to 30. All things work together for good for those who love God. Because no matter what happens to us, good or bad, the Lord Jesus Christ by His power is using it to conform us increasingly into His image. And so I trust that as you wrestle with difficult circumstances, as you enjoy good things that the Lord has given you, you would continue to continually look to Him that He by His power would use those things to help you to grow in grace and to grow in likeness to Christ, that you may become increasingly assured of your salvation. And that brings us to the fifth way in which Christ exercises His power in our lives. By His Holy Spirit, He assures us of eternal life. That is a wonderful assurance. This life is uncertain. This life is limited. This life is full of sorrows and hardships. It must come to an end sometime, as we all know. But here we are told that Jesus, by His Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life. An inheritance that cannot perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for me. And then sixthly, He makes me heartily willing and ready henceforth to live unto Him. We often think about the powers outside of us and how they work against us, but we also need to think about our own sinful for nature, the waywardness of our own hearts, and how easily and quickly we go astray from the Lord. And without His power, we will never even be willing to obey Him, let alone be able to obey Him. And yet, by His power, He makes us heartily willing and ready to live unto Him. And there is a very practical dimension of this. Sometimes we look into our hearts and we find that we lack even the willingness to obey the Lord and to live for Him. Perhaps we are unwilling to share the gospel with others. Perhaps we are holding on to a sin that we should be letting go of, that we should be putting to death and mortify. And as we find this waywardness in our own hearts, we should be encouraged to pray to the Lord Jesus that He would make us willing to obey Him, make us willing to seek His will, make us willing to be transformed into His image. And so let me encourage you today, whatever you are going to be busy with throughout the day, that you be assured that your only comfort in life and death is that you with body and soul, both in life and death, are not your own, but belong to your faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. And His power is at work in you in these six ways that are listed here in the Heidelberg Catechism. And I trust that in each of these six ways you will be greatly encouraged in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. May you seek after Him. May you experience union with Him, true love for Him, even as you rejoice in His love for you. The Lord be with you today. Amen.